Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in us the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created and you shall renew the face of the earth. Amen. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses to the ends of the earth. We heard Jesus' promise and charge to his disciples and to us last Sunday before his ascension. And so today on Pentecost, we hear of that great gift of how the Holy Spirit came without warning, with a sound like a rushing wind, and like wildfire, the Holy Spirit spread among them. Going back to the story of creation in the book of Genesis, we hear that in the beginning, this creating spirit of God, the breath of God, swept over the face of the waters. And then God created man out of the dust of the earth and breathed into man's nostrils the breath of life. And during times of exile and darkness, Isaiah promised the broken people of Israel the coming of one upon whom the spirit of wisdom and understanding shall rest. And during the period of Israel's occupation and oppression by the Roman Empire, John the Baptist promised the coming of the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And from the Gospel of John, which we hear today, Jesus took a deep breath and breathed into his disciples, receive the Holy Spirit. And this morning we hear in the Pentecost account in Acts how the flames were accompanied by wind, the very breath of God. With the creation account, we are reminded that God's own breath becomes Adam's breath, and thus also our own. Very often we take breathing for granted until we cannot breathe. This virus has reminded us just how much we take breathing for granted, as so many infected by the virus have required ventilators to help them breathe, one breath at a time. Being able to breathe is a requirement for living, and ironically, it is by our breath that the virus may be spread to others if we are not careful. I don't think I have ever been more aware of my breath and breathing than during these days. And we have also had this week the all too horrific reminder of this critical requirement of breathing for life. As Gregory Floyd pleaded, I can't breathe. As a police officer's knee pressed into the back of Floyd's neck as he laid pinned to the ground, I can't breathe. I couldn't help but hear the echo of the lament of Eric Garner, another unarmed black man, as he was pinned to the ground in a police officer's chokehold almost six years ago. Eleven times Garner repeated, I can't breathe, before no breath was left in him. The breath of God, which God shares and breathes into man at creation, and so breathes into each and every one of us. Each breath is sacred. As any of us here whose breathing has ever become labored or impaired could witness to. So it is holy work to help another to be able to breathe. And conversely, to even threaten to take away another's ability to breathe is not to be taken lightly. And to unjustly take away another's breath is a horrific act of violence, not only against an individual, but against humanity and against God. From the beginning, through all of the generations of God's people, through the good, the bad and the ugly. God's spirit has continued to bring life out of death, hope out of despair. As the disciples waited together after Jesus had left them in anticipation of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, which he had promised them, I imagine they knew both the hope 
and the trepidation of those in-between times. And it is in just such times when we can experience the presence of the Holy Spirit most powerfully because we are in those times of uncertainty, vulnerability, perhaps fear, and the discomfort of realizing that we are really not in control of everything. And those tend to be the times when we pray, Dear God, help me, help us. Willing at those times to admit that we are at a loss and open to possibilities. Come, Holy Spirit, and help us to be open to possibilities in faith, hope, and love. On Friday, Presiding Bishop Michael Curry shared his own lament for George Floyd's death and of the other unarmed black men and women killed before him at a time when we as a nation are also dealing with a coronavirus pandemic that has killed more than 102,000 Americans. In response to the great unrest across the country, Bishop Curry responded, This crisis reflects deep sores and deep wounds that have been here all along. In the midst of COVID-19 and the pressure cooker of a society in turmoil, a man was brutally killed. The basic human right to life was taken away. His basic human dignity was stripped by someone charged to protect our common humanity. And perhaps the deeper pain of this is the fact that it is not an isolated incident. The pain of this is that it's a deep part of our life. It's not just our history. It is American society today. We are not, however, slaves to our fate unless we choose to do nothing. The church is called to help lift up those voices that may not have been heard before, to help the stories behind the stories be heard. The Holy Spirit can sweep through a church or a movement or a nation, but it still comes down to the individuals who make up that church or movement or nation and how they, how we, have been open to the experience and experience the inbreaking of the Spirit into their lives, into our lives, and have responded to it. It still comes down to our stories of how the Holy Spirit continues to break into our lives each and every day and changes our hearts and how we choose to respond. No matter what we or the church or our nation may go through, the Holy Spirit will always make a way out of no way. May we be messengers on that way, witnesses to the power of the Holy Spirit to bring healing out of pain and division, to bring life out of death, to bring hope out of despair. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in us the fire of your love and strengthen us for this journey. Amen.